why functional public access channels are not run by local governments. It's the same reason why foxes are not put in chicken coops to guard them, or why kleptomaniacs are not assigned community service in jewelry stores. The reason is extreme conflict of interest. Public access channels are designed to be the people's small but unfettered voice squeaking out from the kettle drums of, of commercial speech and government proclamations. The Supreme Court has allowed a few narrowly defined restrictions on free speech. Editorial content is not one of them. But eventually, someone with influence has a complaint and demands that politicians do something about it. People with influence generally do not step aside for the public interest. The corporate media is their media. The government is their government. And when a public access station is in their government building, it's even more imperative that they should control it. The government mindset is incapable of comprehending that the public access part of a peg station operates on a different set of rules than the government part. It's like the Vatican within the country of Italy. Whole different set of rules. Public access is governed by 75 years of Supreme Court decisions dealing with public forum law. But the Supreme Court is just way too far away for our government-dominated pegboard, and the First Amendment is way too abstract of a concept for people who like to be in control. They forget there is just one civil rights for all Americans, regardless of class. Because one is, it's really nice of freedom of speech, but your freedom of speech may not be my freedom of speech. Go ahead. You well, don't let have me, a chance, let me test this. <laughs> yeah, I want to know you. why Alan and whoever else was involved in this perpetrated a hoax on the public of Lake County by broadcasting that false information on the TV station. But compromise is a part of life. You guys didn't want to compromise. The Supreme Court says, we have a list of things that you can control. It's a very short list. And uh, localities aren't allowed to add things to that list because it's the Supreme Court's job. Now, the county's representative has decided to add a new category for programming regulations to the Supreme Court list called political videos. And since we don't have a policy on political videos, we just won't allow them, which is going to severely damage this whole project of mine, which I feel I have a right to begin. Now, the county's representative has done this in the past created another category of editorial control that was not on the Supreme Court's short list. 
To me, this shows amazing arrogance. Just amazing. The county needs to get their representative under control very quickly because it's a federal matter. Our local government cannot be trusted to run a peg station or put public access on the same channel as government content. Two separate standards are just too confusing for them. But let me give it one more shot. <clears throat> the PEG acronym stands for the three components of a PEG cable TV station. The P stands for public access. Public access is governed under a legal subspecialty of constitutional law that employs forum analysis. With terms like strict scrutiny and compelling state interests flying around, First Amendment stuff is way out of the sandbox of local government understanding. They really need to stay in their G zone. The G part of PEG is where the problems come in. When local government puts content on the PEG station, there is supposed to be the appearance of openness and equality since it's everyone's government. Most of Lake County's PEG board is composed of government and former government officials along with an occasional government employee. G people seem to be unable to understand that the P people are under a different set of rules created by federal court cases that supersede local authority. Once again, the government's job is to put government stuff on, and the public's role is to put public stuff on. No matter how many times I've explained it, the pegboard just doesn't get it. Other peg stations give the government interests their own channel. So there is no commingling of legal standards. Of course, most peg stations are allowed to make these kind of common sense decisions because they are operated by a nonprofit organization. There is no good reason why our peg board has not done this. Maybe they think that as long as they are in the same room with the public on a channel, they get to be in charge of the public. They are not. Public access operates on a higher federal level. The pegboard does not believe anything from the Supreme Court could possibly have anything to do with their views on free speech. Their goober political buddies and the usual suspects from out of county don't think much of our First Amendment either. The only rules that public access must follow are the rules of the road. Public access users can ignore laws and policies designed for government institutions. Those functions are off the public forum road, operating on legal requirements that are significantly different from the rules of the road for public access. The all-powerful P, the public, the rules for P 
are from a higher authority. Whoever is in charge does have the mundane role of fairly rationing a public resource without artificially limiting that resource. No unreasonable play limits, no rejection of free additional channels. Perhaps an analogy will clear things up for everyone, even the pegboard. <clears throat> the use of a public access station is like any public forum. It's like using a public road. Your car is like your video. You may use a public road individually without putting out a public notice that you are forming a convoy at a certain time and a certain place, inviting anyone who wants to be on that road with you. But you are not required to invite people you don't know or like to a staging area for a convoy. Any road that you have a right to be on, they have a right to be on, completely independent of you. Just because you do not wish to form a caravan with anyone does not violate their right to use the public roads. While you are driving on this public road, you are entitled to have bumper stickers on your car, expressing your views on certain issues or candidates. You are not required to let people with opposing views put their bumper stickers on your car. They can put their bumper stickers on their car and use the same public road whenever the traffic clears. They don't have to talk to you either. You may walk down that same public road going door to door campaigning for an issue or a candidate. You are not required to notify other candidates or issue opponents where you will be or when, so that you can all go up to each front door at once in a group. They can use that same public road and go up to those same homes independent of you. You are not required to do any organizing for them just because you are using a public road. Local politicians and public administrators often cannot understand that people do some activities that are beyond their direct authority and the political process. Power brokers usually do not put common citizens on the same level as their crony cliques and the privileged wealthy. We are supposed to be satisfied with leftover crumbs and symbolic gestures. The exceptions are traditional and designated public forums. We don't have to settle for what they decide to give us. On December 9, 2009, the PEG board, which included a county supervisor and a former county supervisor, accused the TV8 volunteers of preempting local programming to show conspiracy videos. No example of a preempted video was given. By the end of this government-dominated meeting, a new policy was implemented, which drastically reduced TV8's ability to play most of their popular programming. As TV8 began crashing due to lack of compelling programming and the drying up of contributions due to lack of compelling programming, TV8's volunteer manager, who had built up the station, started cracking up. Then, all the TV8 volunteers were expelled from the station.
the Peg Board approved memberships were canceled without refund. And finally, TVH's connection to their internet upload site was cut off. This attack left TV8 a shell of its former operation, reducing it to mostly a government channel for the BOS at the public's expense. The BOS's current representative on the PEG board recently pushed through a ban on all political speech with a point of view, including editorials. Clearly, clearly, this is a content-based restriction. The public access P in PEG represents federal recognized rights that exceed local government and private interests and their desire to compromise and interpret those rights. Repeatedly, county and city officials have referred to TV8 as theirs, and the equipment provided by the cable company for PEG purposes as theirs. Let me make this perfectly clear. An asset associated with a right is not a government asset. It is a public asset for independent use before it has gone through an expedient political process. Public access is under federal jurisdiction, unlike the G part of PEG. Scary, I know. That is why we must separate out the public access from the government part of PEG to preserve our freedoms. If the PEG board can't do that, then we need to separate the PEG station from government control. This is Dante Diamici reporting from the meth lab.